So, just to give you some example of what type of R&D has been done until now, we started working on activation of soils and fly ashes. I think I cited this example sometime back that uh, when contaminant geometrial interaction occurs at elevated temperature in the presence of some chemicals, the geomaterials get altered, all right. So, what we did is uh, whatever happens in nature we try to simulate in the laboratory. So, I took sodium hydroxide and I boiled it in a pressure cooker to start with my research because I am sure you can realize why pressure cooker because it is autoclaving which is going on at a very high pressure due to the steam and I am achieving very high temperatures. So, what I have done is I have uh, ripped off the external surface of the quartz by applying very high temperatures and very high pressures with sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a chelating agent. Uh, you will uh, learn about this once you are into this industry. It, it basically scrubs the surface of the quartz. This type of activity is also going on in the reservoirs and the ponds where the fly ash is being dumped. So, this was my PhD student's thesis in 2001, 2002. Uh, everybody was talking about utilization of fly ash for making embankments and we were thinking in a different direction and I said, look, wait a minute and let us try to analyze the samples of the fly ash from the pond and we published interesting papers showing that uh, this method should not be utilized for making the embankments and the reason uh, is for about to follow. So, if you take the original ash, uh, you will find that we have quartz, mullite and these are what known as zeolites, activated state of the minerals where sodium alumina ratio is in some order, all right. So, this original material gets, you need not to write, this is all R&D ideas, I mean, you can read there is enough publications on this, you know, we have written a book by the way on this whole thing. I will talk about that and uh, so once you boil it with sodium hydroxide, this is what happens, this is what is known as activated fly ash. Activated fly ash is a, is a catalyst. So, uh, this is the, this is what the after effect of activation of sodium hydroxide is of the fly ash. So, these processes keep on happening in nature as well. So, most of the rocks uh, to my surprise which I was dealing with as a consultant for creating the buildings and the bridges, particularly one in Bombay, a huge bridge. Uh, there was a bug in the mind and let us see microscopically what type of minerals these rocks have and what would be their bearing capacity because bearing capacity is a macro term. Now, when you look into the mineralogy, you realize that these type of minerals are not fit as a load bearing mineral because they are hyperactive and they will be sucking lot of moisture uh, either from the atmosphere or when they come in contact with the water bodies. This is how it looks like. So, from this point onwards, I always tell my student that I am venturing into sukshma. Sukshma, you understand? What is sukshma? Micro, nano. So, this is where the R&D is because until now, the conventional theories have been talking about the macro systems. You never went into the microscopic scales and the nano scales to understand what causes strength to the matrix of the soil. And that is where these tools, you know, SEM and XRD uh, become very, very powerful tools. So, the original ash samples would look like you know, perfect quartz balls. And uh, depending upon the opaque or the transparency of the balls, you can make out what type of mineralogical composition this system would exhibit. Now, this is a very different world. You will realize that more you focus on the particles, the more knowledge you get about it. Remember, this material is getting created because of firing in furnaces at the power plant. So, the coal which you bring to the power plants, you pulverize it and as a pulverized coal, it is injected into the uh, furnace, it is not the coal which is used because you want to enhance the surface area by pulverizing it. And uh, once the surface area of the each particle of the coal increases, calorific value increases. 
So, these are techniques whenever you get time please go and visit a power plant and try to understand how the power is produced. So, all these flash particles which remain in the boiler units or they could be the bottom ash also, uh, they tell different stories. So, you have carbonates from the color you can make out, a beautiful thing which I wanted to show you, it is a sort of a cup inside a cup, you take a football and cut it. So, you have the inner surface and you have the outer surface, all right. So, it is something of that sort, you keep two cups one over each other. So, what happens? A cup is sitting inside another cup, one ball is sitting inside the another ball. We call them as pleurospheres. They have very special utility in today's chemical engineering processes. I mean, if you check on net, you will find that these type of entities are used for making bulletproof vehicles, bulletproof, uh, you know, clothes and so on because their tensile strength is extremely high. These are perfect quartz balls. In sports, uh, most of the gadgets they use cenospheres and pleurospheres. Uh, you know, if you go into the chemistry of these type of particles, you will realize that uh, during very high temperature when the firing was done, these particles, uh, the silica got melted and then in the stack from where the emissions take place, these particles could not go outside and they have to drop down. We were talking about hydrometer test today morning. It is something like hydrometer test which you are doing in a stack of a power plant with all fumes at very high temperature and the particle is dropping down. What type of alterations the system undergoes? So, in the process what happens is a lot of air gets trapped in these particles, clear? So, when the air gets trapped in the particles and they recrystallize, they become pleurospheres or cenospheres and as I said they have a lot of applications. Then I started growing different types of minerals on the particles of uh, quartz or the flash particles. So, what you are observing here is the, this is the, you know, culturing different types of uh, minerals on the surface of the quartz to make it more hyperactive. So, this was the work which was done by my student uh, Dr. Kole, Dr. Nevin and Dr. Jha, uh, these are the guys who have published at least 50, 60 papers on zero detection potential of fly ashes and their applications in environmental cleanup. So, remember when you are dealing with the quartz ball, it is inert, but I have used quartz ball to create different type of protrusions on the surface which act as a sort of a filter sieve, molecular sieve we call them which will have a very high affinity towards cations. So, any cation when it comes in contact with these materials gets trapped over there because of very high cation exchange capacity and surface area. So, these type of systems are quite required in modern day industry, particularly when you valorize the fly ash. Fly ash which was lying as a unused, unattended material has been converted into a catalyst and I can use this as a biofertilizer also because tomorrow micronutrients and the bacteria and microbes will, you know, come in contact in with these protrusions and they will live over there. So, imagine a soil which was earlier barren, I have rejuvenated it. So, these are the concepts which people are trying to work on in the industry. So, this is where the, you know, interesting ideas are in R&D and applications. Read the papers by Bhagwanji Jha and there is a book also on zeolites and their industrial applications and uh, if you go through his papers, you will realize how the whole process is done. The bug in our mind was that uh, interaction of contaminants with soils is not inert and many a times this interaction might alter the fundamental characteristic of the soils also. So, this is what actually we wanted to show. Particularly in case of nuclear industry, this type of concepts are very, very useful where you are dealing with the atomic waste of uh, high toxicity and 
you know it is a big challenge to dispose of the waste and isolate it from the uh, geo environment. So, check the theses which have been done by uh, Dr. Ravi Ranjan Rakesh uh, and Dr. Guru Murthy. Uh, these are the guys who are sponsored by Atomic Energy Regulatory Board of India and DARC and they have done wonderful work on uh, nuclear waste disposal of uh, you know from different atomic power power plants and how to isolate them from the environment. Hope you are getting, I mean I do not expect you to remember and learn everything, I am just trying to give you exposure of what is being done and what has been done already and where we are heading to, that is more important, is this correct? It is not that uh, you should mug up and remember all these things, this is just maybe a different domain of activities of a geotechnical engineering uh, profession. Hmm. Sir, in which way the activated ash sample is different, hmm? property wise? First thing is the mineralogy, so if you remember this itself is different, here you do not have any zeolites in the original fly ash and once you have activated it, you can create zeolites of your liking, the only thing is you have to just regulate the process. So, if agriculture industry is contacting you, you know what type of zeolites you should produce. Engineering properties, why? Yeah, so engineering properties, if you read the paper which is written by Dr. Kole in Canadian Geotechnical Journal 2001 ASTM, there we have talked about uh, these type of systems have a tendency to retain water and they become very fluffy, so especially gravity decreases because what you are doing is you are digesting silica because by using sodium hydroxide all right. So, they become different material which cannot be utilized for load bearing, but it becomes an interesting material for application in environmental uh, issues and giving a solution to the environmental problems, clean up programs. When you have mercury vapors, dioxins, very high uh, concentration of cations, their take up capacity is going to be more. So, if you put them in the soil, they will not allow anything to go out of them, even if flooding takes place. So, when you construct a dam, the biggest problem is soils become barren, I think we discussed this. The biggest issue is why people are against cons construction of dams, it is not only the dislocation of the people, the seepage lines, what do they do? They take out all the minerals from the soil as an excess gradient, so and water logging downstream. So, when water logging occurs, uh, efflorescence takes place and all the minerals get washed out from the soils and soils become barren. So, if you want to rejuvenate all these type of things, you should have a material which is hyperactive, it will not let things go out easily. There are several applications of this material in the modern day medicine. So, I was dealing with some of the business houses of the country where they are trying to create uh, controlled drug delivery systems where these things become the basic component. Most of the diarrheal, you know, medicines, anti diarrheal medicines, you use these type of systems where you inject a mineral in your intestine which has a very high capacity to absorb water. Now, there are two ways of interpreting the how, one is to read and get how it has been done, second is answer yourself if you have a question, that is tomorrow somebody comes to you to create a technology, you take this question as a challenge and give them a solution. So, Indian industry right now wants a solution, are you realizing this? Yeah, this is another example of how scanning electron microscopy can be utilized to understand uh, the surface features of the soils, all right. Uh, you have these pictures taken up at uh, different magnifications, it is written over here 5000 times, 5000 times, 10,000 times, 15,000 times and what we are trying to show is that the sand which is supposed to be very passive contains a lot of bacteria on this and hence uh, one of the applications could be in designing the water filters. So, if you look at uh, another industrial process uh, which is known as uh, dual flue gas conditioning, DFGC is known as dual flue gas conditioning, 
this is normally done to trap the fine particles which are going out of the stacks at the thermal power plants. You know earlier days these back filters were not designed or they were not uh, available in the market. So, back filters are the ones which are installed at the exit of uh, the chimneys so that they will collect dust particles and the dust particles will not get emitted into the environment. When you say the size of the particle which goes into the environment uh, less than 1 ppm, 2 ppm and there is an index also which most of the time people talk about when case of Delhi is discussed, you must be aware of that, particulate matter PM index. So, at power plants because a lot of fine particles might go into the environment, they nowadays install dust collectors, these are back filters. Now, back filter material will again come back into the stacks and will get deposited in the chimneys. Now, if you want to sell your fly ashes to uh, different, uh, let us say, agricultural units. So, what we shown, we have shown is that uh, the fly ash particles which have been collected by giving a treatment with the flue gas can be utilized as a good fertilizer and this was also a project which was sponsored by one of the consulting groups and one of my PhD scholars Dr. Shanta Kumar worked on this. So, what you are observing here this also answers your question Srikant that uh, you are trying to grow different types of uh, deposits on the particles and uh, what you observe is uh, something which is very decorational and you know it has a lot of value in the ornaments. If you create this type of structures they shine in light uh, because of their efflorescence. It is all calcium deposits or it could be sodium sulphate which is coming out of the file. So, what I am trying to show you here is that uh, depending upon the requirement you can create a solution. So, here the objective was uh, how to create a situation where the fine dust particles which are going out of the stacks of the thermal power plants can be collected number one without back filters. Number two whatever gets collected what to do with that can this be used as a as a resource material. The answer was yes this material can be utilized as a good you know manure. So, we created a sellability for this material, sellability in the market. These slides also show the importance of uh, scanning electron microscopy in advanced uh, geotechnical engineering and environmental geomechanics. There are some more examples of how agglomeration of the ash particles can be done. In conventional geomechanics we use the deflocculating agent as sodium meta hexaphosphate to deflocculate the system. Here I want to create flocks so that the emissions in the environment reduce. So, now you can see uh, by injecting ammonia gas, I can create deposition of ammonium sulphate on the particles and this is how the agglomeration looks like. So, they inject ammonia, sometimes they inject sulphur trioxide, sometimes they inject uh, carbon dioxide, sometimes they inject uh, water fumes, sometimes they inject, they scrub the particles with water. So, there are a lot of techniques which are being used. I mean you should realize the you know boundary less approach in geotechnical engineering that is what I always say. All of you have studied this uh, Stokes law and suspension uh, you know depositing in uh, in the water column and my mind used to say that why cannot we do this in a column of flue gas in which the particles are settling down. So, this does abstract thinking makes your research more interesting and then you create a requirement in the market by doing R and D and showing to the rest of the world that uh, what you are thinking is correct. So, most of our projects are like this uh, where we create a value uh, out of a material and then we create a situation where industries uh, get attracted to our research and they fund us and then this is how the whole system thrives. Yes, so, you mentioned that we use those fine particles as manure for farming. Does that affect the percolation of water, uh, percolation of ground water? Yeah, so imagine when the surface area has increased, cation exchange capacity has increased. Uh, in case of extreme desert conditions, also you can grow the plants. 
because as I said that these materials have high affinity towards moisture, so they will not let moisture go out. So that means throughout the year you can have melting point maintained which plants can use to survive themselves. So this was a very revolutionary thinking. Otherwise sands alone cannot uh, sustain the plants in extreme climatic conditions in deserts. And then comes of course first thing is creating a material and then mechanics of this material. Suppose if I have to create a filter bed out of this as uh, she was asking. We wanted to do some experiments to show how plants growth can be controlled by using this type of concepts. I mean you will be surprised to know that all these type of systems are very much useful uh, for poultries where you have a lot of fowl spell. In poultry and aquaculture and pisciculture uh, these things are becoming a boon because they have a tendency to sorb fowl gases H2S particularly and hence the you know animals and birds do not fall sick. So there are a lot of applications.